Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm now going to call to order the December 22nd, 2020 regular town board meeting. Will the clerk please call the roll? I think they're muted. Muted. Yes. I'm so sorry. No, you're okay. We can hear you now. Councilman Delarada. Present. Councilwoman Jaquez. Here. Councilwoman McGraw. Here. Councilman McPartland. Here. Supervisor Syed. Here. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to approval of the minutes. First, we have the minutes of the November 19, 2020 regular town board meeting. Do I have a second to approve those minutes? Second to approve. Thank you. Are there any changes, additions, or subtractions to those minutes? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And those minutes are approved. Next, we have the minutes of the November 20th, 2020 emergency special town board meeting. Do I have a second to approve those minutes? Second to approve. Thank you. Are there any changes, additions, or subtractions to those minutes? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And those minutes are approved. And lastly, we have the minutes of the December 8th, 2020 special town board meeting. Do I have a second to approve? Second to approve. Thank you. Are there any changes, additions, or subtractions to those minutes? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And those minutes are approved. Okay, I'm gonna open the public hearing. Uh, will the clerk please call the public hearing? A public hearing on proposed changes to residential and commercial sewer rent rates for users in consolidated sewer district number six. Thank you, public hearing is now open. I did not receive any uh, email submission comments with regards to this public hearing, in case there is someone uh, on the line right now with us who would like to comment during the public hearing, you can do so now. And last call in the public hearing, if you would like to comment during the public hearing, you can do so now. Okay, I'm now gonna close the public hearing. We're gonna move on to privilege of the floor. This might be uh, somewhat of a lengthy portion. I received as of last count, roughly uh, 35 uh, letter submissions, email submissions, I should say. Um, so thank you to all of our residents who took the time to uh, want to have their voices heard. I'm going to begin reading all of the letters. I'm going to read them in the order that they were received. <clears throat> so if at any point anyone needs a break, um, including myself, I will uh, pause and we can break for a minute if necessary and then go back to uh, the reading. So I'm gonna begin now. Our first letter was submitted by Jillian Scott of 1231 Keys Avenue. Jillian writes, I'm writing to submit my comments regarding the bar proposed for the co-op plaza on Knott Street in Niskayuna. I'm really concerned about the traffic this establishment would bring to the area and whether the small footprint of the area can handle the level of comings and goings. I'm concerned about an increased amount of traffic pulling in, backing out of the parking spots in front of the plaza, particularly at night. This area is already hazardous for cyclists going by on Knott Street, even in broad daylight. Secondly, I'm concerned as well for the safety of pedestrians crossing the road at night to get from the bigger lot across the street to the bar. 
And thirdly, I'm concerned about the number of people that may congregate at the back window that will be offering takeout service for ice cream slash gelato. It seems unlikely that people wanting to use the takeout window will park in the big lot across from the co-op. I suspect they are much more likely to park along Clifton Park Road and wonder what the town will do to prevent this or mitigate the resulting impacts on surrounding homeowners. And that concludes that letter. Next letter is from Dana Brizzy. Dana writes, I'm strongly opposed to the proposed bar and restaurant in the co-op plaza. The Niskiuna does not need to support this type of business. If people want to go out to eat or for a drink, they can go to City Squire on Union Street. This area is a neighborhood and we don't want it here. I would much rather see a nice small gift store or card shop. The town can look for better ways to spend our taxpayer dollars. The real problem with that corner is the number of cars in the lot at the corner gas station, not to mention the traffic congestion. That intersection can be very dangerous. The residents of this part of Old Niskiuna deserve better than a bar. And that concludes uh, that email. Next email is from Connie Natus. Connie writes, our beautiful family oriented town does not need a bar or a restaurant in the Knott Street slash Clifton Park Road area. Families have chosen this area because of a friendly, quiet house location. Why is the town trying to destroy the wonderful family community that it is here? Please vote no. That concludes that email. Uh, next email is from Ann T. Kell, and she writes simply no for the restaurant. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Christine Kelly of 1386 Keys Avenue. Christine writes, Dear Supervisor Syed and Planner Robertson, I'm a resident of Nisuna. I'm writing to oppose any consideration or approvals to build, install, or locate a bar restaurant on Clifton Park Road and Knott Street. This area is already too congested. There are constant traffic issues already. There's no room for expanded parking. It should retain residential only settings. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Diana Cross. Diane, I'm sorry, Diane Cross of 2016 Clifton Park Road. Diane writes, please vote no to the proposed bar restaurant on Clifton Park Road. Please help keep the area safe and family friendly. As a resident of this street, I do not support this initiative. That concludes that email. Next email is from Jamie Guerin. Jamie writes, I'm a Niskiuna resident who is concerned about the proposal to authorize a, rest a restaurant at Clifton Park Road. Traffic in this area is already a nightmare. When the state project for Knott Street begins in 2021, things will get even worse. Now does not seem an appropriate time to encourage more vehicular traffic in this area. There are existing commercial areas in Niskiuna, which could accommodate a new restaurant. The proposed location is, in my opinion, not a suitable one. That concludes that email. Next email is submitted by Jeffrey Ellen Bogan. Jeffrey writes, the board and Laura, as an owner of a property on Crescent Road, I'm writing to raise my concern about the availability of parking. In the evenings and weekends, competition for parking is already strained and will increase with new businesses, making it difficult for apartment residents to have easy access to their homes. Recent parking changes approved on the busy thoroughfare have already complicated this situation. Please consider expanding the area that street parking is permitted, widening Crescent Road with a slant parking <clears throat> and offering apartment tenants permits for overnight parking privileges. Without creating additional parking required by modern businesses and residential tenants, the future of Nisuna's town center will further diminish because property owners and investors will not be incentivized to make the right investments to keep it viable. Thank you for your consideration. That concludes that email. Next email is submitted by Deborah and David Deeb of 1521 Valencia Road. Deborah and David write, Dear Supervisor Syed, my husband and I have lived in Niskuna for four years and we love it here. We chose old Niskuna because, because of its charm and closeness to things that we might need as we age. My husband and I are both in our 70s. We wanted to be able to walk to grocery stores, the bank, library, library, and other conveniences. Although we are not opposed to a neighborhood restaurant and bar, we are concerned about the proposed location of Thomas Nicky's restaurant. The traffic around the co-op and other businesses is frightening now. 
Even with the proposed improvements, a change in traffic will not lessen. Adding a restaurant at that location is very concerning to us. The best comparison we can make to illustrate our concerns is Mario's restaurant on River Road. We love Mario's, but picking up dinner or going out to dinner there is unnerving because of the lack of parking. Before COVID, we might go to Mario's on a Friday. The parking lot would be packed even though the dining room would not be filled. We were told that the bar patrons tend to drive to Mario's individually because they would head home after meeting with coworkers. Why would it be any different with the Knott Street location? We ask that you not accept Thomas Nicky's request to establish a restaurant slash bar at the proposed Knott Street location. Thank you for your consideration. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Lori Jancic of 1525 Clifton Park Road. Lori writes, this seems like a fait accompli and it really should not be. As a responsible homeowner of a residential owner and child occupied home on Clifton Park Road, this is a terribly ill-conceived business plan. People's lives are at risk, not to mention the character of streets contiguous to the area. We've asked for a police presence to nab speeding, crosswalks at Clifton Park Road for kids on their way to Van Antwerp, et cetera, to no avail. More than a handful of homes on the contiguous blocks of Clifton Park Road and Crescent are rental properties now catering to people paying by the room. After 7 or 8 p.m., they return to park. The corner at Clifton Park Road and Knott Street is littered now with masks, candy wrappers, and a curious assortment of small and medium liquor bottles. Cars flying southwest from Balltown to Knott via Crescent recognize the stop sign. There may be one in eight times that that happens. A young man riding his bike to VA was so nearly struck one Wednesday near Halloween, it was breathless. Traveling northeast from Knott to Balltown or north on Clifton Park Road, one would be stunned by the speed a truck can generate on what is meant to be a 30 mile per hour road. So many children are walking from Old Nesuna to Hillside in Van Antwerp. When approaching Knott, traveling south on Clifton Park Road, cars pull practically out onto Knott Street to see around the Langs vehicles parked close to Knott. Already cars impede pedestrians in this way. Normally these cars do not stop, nor do they look west before pulling out onto Knott Street to travel west. Don't let Nesuna be this town, divided between wealthier Rosendale estate owners and the rest of us. There are other serious variables at play. And that concludes that email. Next email was submitted by James Daly. Um, no address written. They write, or James writes, Dear Supervisor Syed and Planner Robertson, we are very concerned citizens of Clifton Park Road. We were amazed to hear that the town is approving a bar slash restaurant to be added to the co-op plaza. We truly cannot understand the thought process related to this decision. We count on you to make sound decisions to protect our neighborhood and residents. Given the congestion and overall danger of Knott Street and specifically between the section from Clifton Park Road to Balltown intersection, why would you even entertain such an idea? People have already been killed in this stretch of road and the town does nothing to slow the speed of traffic on Knott Street where people are traveling 40 to 50 miles per hour every day. Furthermore, there is a vacant restaurant only a block away that is suited for this and has the appropriate parking in St. James Square. Now you wanna add more traffic and more confusion. It is already so bad that we drive our kids to the high school just so they don't have to risk their lives at the Clifton Park and Knott Street intersection. Where are all of these people going to park? Please tell me that you're not converting any residentially zoned property into commercially zoned for parking. This whole idea is absurd. Clifton Park Road is going to have cars parked everywhere, similar to the city squire when they were busy, cars blocking driveways and making it difficult to maneuver down the street. People are not going to park in the lot across the street and walk, they will just park on the street. Additionally, the people in Old Nesuna do not want a business open until 11 p.m. The stores in the plaza are all closed by 8 or 9 p.m. Also, what is the guarantee that 11 p.m. will be closing time? I'm sure if customers want to stay, they will remain open. I believe the liquor authority gives bars the right to remain open until 3 or 4 a.m. So the town will actually have no enforcement on the hours. Since it appears that the new tenants have already begun work on this space, 
We assume that you have already given them your blessing. We are very disappointed that this has just come to light and that the town wasn't more open and honest with the residents. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Bill Bolu. Uh, Bill writes, I do not think it is a good idea to have a restaurant on Knott and Clifton Park until the road reconstruction is completed, then reevaluate re the situation. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Kate Charton of 2267 Berkeley Avenue. Kate writes, I have been made aware of the December 22nd vote on the proposed bar slash restaurant, the Broken Inn in Old Nesquina. I wanted to show our support for this entrepreneur. Our family hopes this establishment is permitted and we look forward to having a small friendly restaurant slash bar open in our town. And that concludes that email. Next email is submitted by Tess Healy of 2319 Sherrill Lane. Tess writes, I support the addition of a restaurant and ice cream shop to the Niskuna Co-op Plaza. If this project is designed with complete streets measures which encourage walking and bicycling, then incremental vehicle parking needs will be moderate. Part of being a community is having local businesses that help bring us together. This project will be a great addition to our town. That concludes that email. Next email is from Jesse Lyons of 1390 Myron Street. Jesse writes, I wanted to send a note in support of the new restaurant slash bar being proposed in the old Niski Plaza near the co-op. I live on Myron in Almeria and would love for a business like this to be a reality. What a fantastic thing to have a place to be able to frequent within walking distance. One of the things that makes old Niski so special is all the neighborhood socializing. A place like this would fit in with the neighborhood nicely. I hope this becomes a reality and I look, I really look forward to checking it out when it opens. That concludes that email. Next email was submitted by Lauren Labrecki Brown of 1520 Dean Street. Lauren writes, just a quick note for the town board to say that me and my family on Dean Street are in full support of the new restaurant and ice cream shop. We cannot wait to make our town more walkable with the new sidewalk improvements and this restaurant will offer just another spot to walk to. We are extremely excited just as all of our neighbors are too. Thank, thank you for your thoughtful consideration with this issue. That concludes that email. Next email is from Peter and Kelly Tremarkey of 1359 Dean Street. They write, Please note our support of the proposed restaurant in the co-op plaza. I would also encourage the town and the owners of the plaza to use this opportunity to seek Metroplex funds for facade improvements to the buildings. The white cornices on some of the buildings improve the appearance and should be added to the rest of the buildings. Thank you. That concludes that email. Next email is from Nicole Galligan of 1500 Regent Street. Nicole writes, I just wanted to send an email on behalf of myself and my husband who own a home at Knott and Regent Streets to support the proposed Broken Inn restaurant and pub in the co-op plaza. We have long felt that Nisiuna is a bit of a restaurant desert and we need to go outside of our town for meals out. This is a welcome change for us. I would also like to bring to your attention a thread in the next door community where there are well over 100 locals supporting this venture as well as about three dissenters. The residents living closest to where the businesses would be located clearly heartily support the venture. We sincerely hope that the town approves this so that we have a place to go and enjoy ourselves within our community. That concludes that email. Next email is submitted by Janet O'Farrell of 2207 and 2209 Knott Street. I live in the 1400 block of Clifton Park Road and would be thrilled if there were a restaurant on Knott Street within walking distance. I hope the town board will approve Mr. Nicky's plan for the former barber shop. And that concludes that email. Next email was submitted by Ronald and Sarah Johnson of 1464 via Del Mar. They write, my husband and I are expressing our concern over the proposed bar slash restaurant being planned for Knott Street. We are very much against this plan as it is a residential community with no sidewalks. There isn't enough parking for consumers and we do not want our street via Del Mar to start being lined with cars. Those who don't live on the street will start parking on our block to avoid non-street traffic. 
This prevents residents from doing so and we pay to live here. Furthermore, we just had the discussion over the summer about cars using our street to avoid Balltown Road slash not street traffic. The town board claimed to understand our concerns and voted against changing the roads. If a bar is added to not street, that creates an even bigger safety hazard, especially in the winter with cars slipping and sliding, black ice, less room to walk or drive because of plowed snow hills. It will also create more foot traffic in the neighborhood at late times of the night when families are settled in trying to rest. It would be nice to think that people wouldn't hop in a car and drive drunk or be mischievous, but that is not a reality. As previous restaurant owners, our family organized and held a very successful fundraiser for the Deanna Rivers and Chris Stewart Foundation. Teens that attended Shaker High School and Shenandoah High School were tragically killed in a DUI car accident because a man decided to get in his car and drive while drunk. We have our own residents, children, and other consumers in the area walking to local schools and businesses. You can't guarantee that this won't create an increased risk in the community. One that the town will most likely have to answer to since homeowners and renters do not want Mr. Nicky's bar. The town can't even guarantee a safe crosswalk that connects from the co-op to the parking lot on Knott Street. We get it, we're both from the tri-state area. It's important for a community to have relevant businesses that can be frequented. However, when the wrong business enters a community, the community won't support it and you won't get new homeowners. When the right type of business comes along, the community will support it. This bar slash restaurant is not that type of business. We vote now to this proposed plan. And that concludes that email. Next email was submitted by Cynthia Wyatt of 1387 Keys Avenue. Cynthia writes, I would like to voice my support for the special use permit to bring the broken into the co-op plaza. I think this will revitalize the block and be a welcome boost to the existing businesses here, as well as be a lovely dining option within walking distance for our community. Not to mention the dollars that will benefit our local economy and tax base. Small businesses such as this are a huge economic benefit to our community. Dollars spent here circulate in our community. They employ people in our community. They contribute to local organizations. They buy goods and services in our, in our community, all of which strengthens our community and contributes to the tax base. I wish this community well. I was born and raised here and have returned. I love this community and want to see it thrive. As a small business owner, I would like to see this community develop into a place that would attract the nicer small businesses that would enrich the quality of life here. This is a step in the right direction. And that concludes that email. Our next email is from Liddy Zero of 2085 Orchard Park Drive. Liddy writes, I want to write to express my support for the new restaurant, The Broken Inn. I am impressed with the proposed owner, Thomas Nicky, who is communicating with the community and has been very transparent about his proposal. Here are some reasons why I support the project. I believe that our community is enriched both economically and socially by having more restaurants and businesses, especially locally owned businesses. This is a place that I will patronize. I love the idea of a gelato window and having a neighborhood restaurant. Their menu looks great for a night out or a family dinner. The Broken Inn will transform a tired space and make it into something nice. This will add value to our town center. Thomas lives in Nisiuna and is part of our community. I think it's important for us to support our fellow community members. I would also like to say that I don't think having a bar is, as part of the restaurant is an issue. LT's has had a bar for years and they're right next to the high school. It's, it just isn't an issue in my opinion. I look forward to having a new local restaurant to support. That concludes that email. Next email was submitted by Ev Kaufman of 1358 Regent Street. Ev writes, I have owned my home in Nisiuna for 35 years. I love this town and the only thing that would make it better is if we had a place to which we could walk and meet friends for dinner slash drinks. I can't think of a better option than the one being proposed by Tom Nicky in the Knott Street Shopping Plaza, especially since he is a resident of Nisiuna. Please consider this proposal. That concludes that email. Next email is from Emily Schusis of 1366 Myron Street. Emily writes, I've lived, on Nisqu I've lived in Old Niskayuna for 13 years and I just wanted to voice my support for the Broken Inn. Through the local press and the Nextdoor app, I've seen that there is some opposition to this proposed business. I understand the concerns, but think that they will 
largely work themselves out, as my impression is that many people, including myself, would walk to the establishment and be vigilant regarding crossing Knott Street. And I think that it could really be an asset to the community. I sincerely hope that this business opportunity is approved and given a chance. Thank you. That concludes that email. Next email is submitted by Holly Comanzo of 2506 Eastern Parkway. Holly writes, I'm in full support. I would like very much to see this new business open. What a great addition to the neighborhood. That concludes that email. Our next email is submitted by Gail King. Gail writes, in order to accommodate Mr. Thomas Nikki's bar slash restaurant, our elected and appointed, appointed officials are neglecting the rights of the business owners, employees, and clients who are relying on the parking in front of the established businesses. We need more parking, not less. The neighbors who want this bar slash restaurant have the, at least, have the least to share. We snowplow, shovel, patch holes, sweep, and pick up trash. Each of the five individual buildings take care of their own cleanup and repairs. What are these privately owned buildings? Looks like whatever you feel like calling us. We are, quote, down by the co-op, neighborhood commercial, commercial neighborhood, multi-use shopping center. Now we hear restaurants sit down and take out that need the same amount of parking spaces. Really, how long do you stay in a restaurant? I think longer than it takes to get your hair done. The buildings are in the same space since the 1930s, last one built in the late 60s. Parking was chopped out by the side of Knott Street. Now we hear the spaces on the south side of Knott between Via Del Mar and Clifton Park Road will become the east and westbound heavyweight lanes of traffic. No stopping, no curb cuts. How do we get into our property at 2208 Knott Street? This means we lose about 15 parking spaces we chopped out of the right of way and maintained as parking for 30 plus years. The parking was in use when we bought the land. It's always how to stay in business. Losing parking, so we buy the 2220 Crescent property, apply for permits to move Gail King's hair removal business. We try to do a lot of the work ourselves, much to the chagrin of town officials. Along comes COVID to shut us down. With so much going on now, just to stay alive, Mr. Nicky and planners have snuck up on us. And now you say that Thomas Nicky's customers can park anywhere. No wonder if he was told he has to chop out his own parking, like and pay for it. The Langs know but ignore. Does Nicky know but ignore? Do the planners know but ignore? We really are not a multi-use shopping center and never have been. I believe this title was recently added to accommodate Mr. Nicky or was left out or not translated properly from print to electronic code. That multi-use self-contained shopping center is across the street. That shopping center was allowed to exist in order to shut down the co-op the last time they wanted to expand. Mr. Nicky has stated he wants to serve 30 to 50 guests at one time every night of the week. Planners state that there are 30 parking spaces really for all of us. Where is your math? Where do the rest of the businesses park? There will be an overlap of customers from one to eight. Cars will be parking on top of each other. You are counting the same spaces over and over again. Where do our eight residential tenants, people, park at night? How do they sleep with the noise? Mr. Nicky makes this sound like it's his duty to move in during the late night hours and use our parking. I have not given my permission for this bar slash restaurant to park on our property or in front of our property. It will be marked, you will be towed. Mr. Nicky has asked our tenants if bar customers can park. Ask the building owners, has co-op taken a vote of their owners? Will they maintain the parking Nicky wants to use for free? It's Mr. Nicky's and the Lang's obligation to provide safe parking for their clients not the obligation of the businesses and property owners or the town residents who are already here. Also, there will be less parking after construction in May and less access. There is a movement to allow parking on nearby streets. Who pays for this? Will there be sidewalks? Will they become one-way streets? Will residents get to vote? Who will be allowed to use the parking? All of the shoppers? Will, mi will Mr. Nicky and the Langs be paying for this? Please talk to me if you need more explanation. Gail King, resident for decades, business owner, property owner, 
mother to four Nascuna alumni, godmother to six grandchildren. For all of these reasons, I ask you to play fair and say no. And that concludes that email letter. Our next email is submitted by Margaret Brennan. Margaret writes, recently I've become aware that the issues of Paul Sebesta's behavior while an employee of the town of Niskayuna are greater than we had first been led to believe. You might wonder how I know there is more to the story. Well, some coward sent copies through the mail to me, which contained two very racist emails sent from Paul Sebesta's town computer to his wife at her work several years ago. When these arrived, I was sickened by the emails, but also very confused about why me? I'm nobody, I don't even know Mr. Sebesta, and I'm powerless to do anything about this. While not quite powerless, I contacted the investigator that the town had hired to delve into the racially inappropriate emails. He responded that he did not want, to, did not want me to send the emails to him and basically shot me down. So there I've been, I have two very upsetting pieces of racist mail, what, what do I do next? While watching the privilege of the floor during November town board meeting, I learned other community members had also received this mail. When member of the community tried to find out more about this, the town lawyer wanted a one-to-one uh, one -one meeting and suggested the citizen was interfering with their investigation. What the heck is going on? Well, I'm not going to investigate it, but I think it's time for some openness and explanation of how wide this problem is. In addition, I recently saw an ad for the upcoming continuing community diversity training. In the ad, it highlighted our town board member, Ms. McGraw, as the leader of this group. At this point, I've not heard her tape back her statements about Mr. Sebesta's racist picture not being so bad since it was a Halloween costume. With this additional information showing a pattern of racist behavior, I would think as a leader of this movement, she would be speaking out and retracting her former statements. For two years, I've heard nothing but requests for openness from our town government, from our citizens. When is this going to happen? Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas to all. And that concludes that email. Our next email was submitted by Randy Liu. Randy writes, I would like to voice my support for the proposed restaurant on Knott Street as proposed this business would sure add to the quality of life in Old Miss Una. As a 30 year resident on Baker Avenue, it certainly would be nice to have a non-chain dinner option within walking distance. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Patricia O'Connor. Patricia writes, just wanted to confirm my and my husband's support for the opening of the Broken Inn in Miss Una Center. Looking forward to having a local pub in town. And that concludes that email. Next email is from uh, Mr. Malloy. Mr. Malloy writes, all in favor, we live on Dean Street. It would be great to have some place besides the Squire close to home. We shop at the co-op and the liquor store. We would love to support another local business. And that concludes that email. Next email is from Lucinda Chris of 1485 Dorwalt. Lucinda writes, I live in the neighborhood area where the potential broken in would like to locate and my husband and I are in complete support of a great neighborhood place where we could go and grab a meal, either eat, and, uh, either eat in or take out. We gave LTs many times to get healthy meals right, and they failed miserably every time, so we stopped patronizing them. I've read the description of the plans for this restaurant, and I think Thomas and his family have nailed it. We are excited and support this neighborhood place 100%. That concludes that email. Next letter was submitted by Georgiana Carney. Georgiana writes, my name is Georgiana Carney and I've owned my home at 1465 Via Del Mar for 31 years. I'm wishing to voice my concerns regarding the project at 2209 Knott Street, also known as the Broken Inn. First, let me state that I've never had reason to contact the town until development concerns started affecting my residential street slash neighborhood about 20 years ago. At that time, a neighboring property owner decided to cut down a stand of trees 
on her residential lot without a permit. Trees that provided my neighbors and I with a slight with a sight and noise barrier to Knott Street. Since then, there has been one reason after another for concern. In the early 2000s, the owner of the now treeless residential property wants it turned into a parking lot, adding traffic and noise to an already busy corridor that is surrounded by residential homes. Fortunately, that was defeated. In 2010 slash 2011, once again, the same owner proposed the residential property be turned into a parking lot. Once again, that did not happen. August of 2017, a regional developer wanted to tear down three houses on Balltown Road and build approximately 60 to 80 apartments between CVS and Channel 6, another proposal that would add traffic and noise to a quiet residential neighborhood. Fortunately, that plan was turned down. June of 2020, my neighbors and I spoke out against a county plan to move the entrance and exit of the co-op parking lot onto Via Del Mar, a plan that would direct traffic down a short residential street that is home to many school-aged children. We have been told that will not happen. December of 2020, here we are again. This time it's the broken in. I wrote to you all last month with my concerns, the most important being parking and lights. There simply is not enough parking for this establishment. I urge you all to listen to last week's planning board meeting. The discussion of this item starts at 27 minutes and 52 seconds in. If I understand correctly, the only way this restaurant slash bar meets the town's parking requirements is to declare the five individually owned buildings, which are located in the middle of a residential area, a multi-use shopping center. Under no stretch of the imagination, imagination does this term fit these buildings. And without this designation, the restaurant slash bar must have more parking than what is available. I've seen all of the support for the Broken Inn posted on next door. I've also heard that Mr. Nicky is a great guy, and I'm sure he is. But here's the thing, none of that matters if the location can not accommodate the parking. The fact remains that those buildings are in a shopping center. This restaurant, heck any restaurant, needs more than seven parking spaces and none of its supporters will be living directly across the street from this potential traffic nightmare. The planning and town boards have done a good job of holding the line on commercialization as outlined above. Now is not the time to stop. Please do not change the rules to accommodate one potential business when the effects could be so damaging and lasting. And that concludes that letter. And our next email, last one, is submitted by Kevin Duffy of 1508 Keys Avenue. Kevin writes, at last month's town board meeting, the former town attorney, Rob Hess, expressed his dismay at being contacted by the current town attorney regarding an apparent breach of the town's emails and attorney-client privilege and the $200,000 investigation of the former town comptroller's Halloween costume from 2014. I, too, was contacted by the town attorney regarding this matter. Apparently, there are those who are peddling a theory I have been provided attorney-client privileged information because I simply repeated what was in the newspaper at a recent town board meeting. If a town board believes anyone has been provided attorney-client work product, they have an obligation to follow up on the matter. When I was contacted, I didn't become outraged, offer a convoluted and implausible explanation, or point fingers at the town supervisor and board members. Instead, I sought to schedule a time to meet with the town attorney. The constant negativity and politics of personal destruction spewed by the former town attorney and his friends at every turn is disheartening. In no way does it reflect the realities in our community or the record of achievement of the Democrats they attack. The pandemic is a public health and economic crisis. People are working hard to overcome isolation, keep their families safe and healthy, and ensure food is on the table. The fact that the former town attorney and his pals risked the health and safety of themselves and more important, those at town hall, just to jump in front of a camera and spew hate is pathetic. They should be ashamed of themselves. And that concludes that email. That is my last emailed comment of the evening. And if there is um, anyone who is joining us on the line this evening who would like to contribute to privilege of the floor, you can do so now before I close privilege of the floor. And we'll give you a last chance. If anyone would like to contribute to privilege of the floor, you can do so now before I close. Okay, I'm gonna close privilege of the floor. We're gonna move on to our committee reports. And we are going to begin with Councilwoman Jake West. 
Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, on, I'm reporting on the Highway Parks and Recreation Committee. Start with community programs update. Uh, our Toys for Tots program, we officially collected five uh, and a half large boxes. Town Hall was the largest collection site for the entire town. Heartfelt thanks to everyone who donated and helped make this a very Merry Christmas for all the children who will get a new toy this holiday season. Uh, I'd also like to thank Lori Peretti and her entire staff for the extraordinary efforts they made to accommodate collections and uh, drop off donations while Town Hall was closed. Their efforts embody the joy of giving and the spirit of the season, so thank you to them. Uh, ski Club, registration for Ski Club has closed and we have 30 registered uh, children. As of now, we're still planning to run this program. The bus is filled to 50% capacity and adequately space spaces everyone in the bus. The program is scheduled to run January 8th to February 12th. More to come on that. We'll see how things develop. As far as the Senior Center, uh, obviously we, we had to close that, but we do continue to offer our resident services. Uh, we're still running the new lunch program, uh, which is a drive-through pickup, a $5 lunch from Gershon's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, activity packets continue to be delivered. Uh, the staff continues to field calls to help coordinate groceries, errands, and requests for snow services and removal, et cetera, from our residents. The center is ready to reopen whenever we get the green light on doing so. Maintenance, spot cleaning, and UVC lights and seasonal themes are all up to date. Uh, communications and virtual exercise continue for our senior residents and uh, the staff wanted uh, to note that they've been able to expand the, expand the email base for town and senior news quite a bit through um, this pandemic so that is a silver lining there. As far as highway updates, um, loosely pickup ended on December 11th. Every zone was completed twice with another pass through to pick up small piles that were put out after the last pickup date. In total, highways crews picked up a total of almost 11,000 yards of loose leaves, which is equal to 629 truckloads and uh, equates to about 4,500 man hours of labor. Crews quickly transitioned from leaf pickup to prepare our leaf trucks to become plow trucks for the highway uh, winter workload. This is a tremendous amount of work and Ray and I applaud the staff for all their hard work. Uh, regarding the record setting winter storm that hit our area on December 17th, it was the fourth largest amount of snow on record in the month of December and the eighth largest winter storm overall on record in the area. So um, quite historic. Crews began their work at 3 a.m. on Thursday, December 17th. Trucks were loaded and checked uh, on the night before, so trucks could start plowing immediately, which they did. Upon arrival, uh, our 37 employees were on the roads for 20 plus hours straight, with no breaks, including for meals. A total of 366 overtime man hours alone were worked in that one day. The storm has had many challenges, among them the large plow trucks kept getting stuck and having to have um, the front you know, loaders pull them out and get them back on the roads to try and clear paths for trucks to get through. Uh, the crews were dispatched to many first responders trying to get to work in many cases, plowing a path for them uh, in front of them to keep them moving. In many cases, it took 10 to 12 hours to get through a plow route, which normally takes about three and a half hours to complete. After working until 1030 that night, um, uh, excuse me, after the roads were passable, the crews returned and began their work again at 6.30 a.m. the next day, December 18th, to start all over again. Uh, streets were pushed back the best that they could be, considering the amount of snow. Loaders were dispatched on Saturday, December 19th, to begin clear clearing intersections on Route 7 so that cars could see oncoming traffic and safely commute. Crews will continue to clean and remove snow in all areas of town until the job's done. Ray Smith, our highway superintendent, is working with DOT to get the edges of Route 7 pushed back so that sidewalks around town can also be cleared. This is a priority and will be done as soon as possible. Uh, Ray Smith and I would like to thank everyone for their patience. 
Please know highway crews are doing and will continue doing their best to serve all residents. I join Ray in thanking all highway staff for their many hours of hard work, along with the members of the water and sewer department, including Rich and Tony, for their assistance in cleaning intersections all throughout town. Thank you very much. Ray also extends his thanks to, supervi to the supervisor and town board members for their involvement and encouragement during this historic event. Uh, from all highway parks and recreation staff to all residents, we wish you all a very happy, healthy, and safe holiday, and we look forward to serving you in 2021. Uh, the next Highway Parks and Recreation meeting will take place on January 6th at 8.15 a.m. We're, we're changing to 8.15 a.m. away from 8 a.m. for um, next year's meeting. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Thank you very much. We're now gonna move on to Councilman Delarada. Yes, thank you. Um, as you know, I chair the Economic Development uh, Committee and we meet on the first Friday of every month. We will be meeting again Friday, January 8th at 8.30 a.m. And of course, these are still virtual. Um, of course, there's a couple of uh, big things going on. Um, the Planning Board is continuing to work on the proposal on tonight's agenda for a special use permit and that permit being the broken in uh, at the 22007 Knott Street. Um, I just want to say a couple things about that. I know parking is a big concern. Um, the What we're voting on tonight is to approve an application to send this to the planning board and the planning board is going to look at parking very closely because the application will be conditioned uh, upon the planning board finalizing cross easements uh, and other forms of written parking agreements to ensure that there is adequate off-street parking. Um, the architectural review board is also going to be looked at uh, the lighting uh, and other safety and traffic issues uh, will be reviewed by the county as well. So I do want to let the residents know um, that we are not approving the project in its entirety tonight, if it does pass. We are simply getting it to the planning board so they can make determinations and recommendations as to whether or not this is a good project to go forward with. Very much as we did with the high density apartment buildings um, that was eventually denied in the CVS uh, and the Channel 6 area on Balltown Road. Um, and very similar to the Kelts Farm project uh, that is currently pending and under review. Um, so there is nothing going on here that is out of the ordinary and we are not approving the project as a whole tonight if we do uh, vote to pass this resolution. Um, so all of the people that have concerns and comments will again be able to go to the planning board and address them and make sure uh, that they're happy with the proposal uh, and the way that this project will come out. I do think that it would be a good fit um, if the parking is worked out. I do think the timing of it makes sense, especially with the um, development and redevelopment that we're doing with that area uh, with the county. So this is something that will be taken in, into consideration um, so it can be one complete project. Um, so that, of course, is a big thing going on in our committee. Uh, another big thing is, is that, of course, uh, we have vacancies that will be coming up in many of the town committees. Um, I do want people to keep an eye on the town website for vacancies for these town committee posts because they are important and they do allow uh, you folks to have a direct voice into how the town resolves problems um, specific problems within uh, the economic committee as well as uh, the highway development and many other ones. So hopefully uh, we will get a lot of applications for the openings that we have. And I would love to see everybody that can make our virtual meeting on January 8th at 8.30 a.m. Thank you and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.
Thank you. We're now going to move on to Councilwoman McGraw. Thank you, Supervisor. I just want to highlight a couple of things that are going on right now with the Public Works uh, Committee and the Public Works Department in town. Obviously, the snowstorm has taken up much of the energy in our workforce. Um, the Public Works folks have been out there shoveling out hydrants and ensuring that there is a clear path and those are safe. And um, Matt Yetto, our superintendent of water and sewer, wanted to just thank all the residents who have helped with this. Um, obviously, folks who have hydrants on their property sort of know the drill by now, but you know, people are new to town and you very rarely see this much snow. So everyone who helped, um, thank you very much for those of you who just simply cannot do that. Um, the Public Works folks have been out there and our team has been out there digging them all out and ensuring the safety of our community. Um, I, I think many of you have been following the uh, Mohawk Road water main replacement project that's finishing up now and we're really quite pleased. It, it has an enormous impact. While it's in one section of town, it has an enormous impact on the entire uh, community and um, our water delivery system. And so um, many of you remember about five years ago when that water main, we had a tremendous water main break over that way. Much of our town was without water for a, for a period of time. So um, getting that project up and running, finished off has really been an enormous accomplishment for this um, year that otherwise didn't have too many accomplishments. So I really wanna thank the Public Works staff and everyone involved in finishing off that project. Uh, this evening, we have a resolution on our agenda, um, and it's something that's gotten quite a bit of attention. Our um, public work staff and the folks who work um, in our water plant and our wastewater treatment facilities have brought to our attention um, the fact that many communities are also calling, joining together and requesting of the governor and the State Department of Health, um, our local control rooms, COVID response control rooms, if they could consider uh, moving up the staff of these water and wastewater treatment plants to um, what they call 1B status to receive the COVID vaccine. And I think we can all agree that um, staff and folks who who work each day to deliver our water and ensure that it is safe and healthy um, probably should be given that that extra that layer of protection. They have requested it. It has been my honor to advocate for that. And tonight we are um, proposing a memorializing resolution calling on the governor and the Department of Health, as I've said, to move forward and, and change that status. There have been other um, essential workers throughout the state whose statuses have been changed, EMS and others, and certainly um, the, these workers fall into that category. Um, they would happily get the vaccine. So we, we would like to be able to get that provided to them. Um, I just want to thank folks who came out tonight, the um, 30 some odd folks who wanted to have their opinions expressed regarding the proposed restaurant. I think. Councilman De La Rada did uh, an outstanding job as always explaining exactly what the process is and at what point in the process we are um, at at this point. Um, many of the folks are friends and neighbors or people I have never met, um, but I have never met the um, proposed developer of this pro project. I've never discussed this with him, but hundreds of our neighbors have reached out to me about this. They have very strong opinions, but everyone has expressed their opinions um, very respectfully of all sides. And um, I, I think that I, I know that for, for me, always hearing from our neighbors and our residents about something like this um, that has an impact on our community and the quality of life in our community, it really is very helpful. So I appreciate everyone who either submitted a letter tonight or has reached out to me by phone, stopping at my house, emailing me. Um, to express their opinion. I, I thank them very, very much. And certainly I thank also the business owners over at the co-op plaza. Um, they have endured a lot over the last few years. They've been the subject of a lot of attention from um, the town government, the county government, state when, it, when it's um, necessary. And um, I just always appreciate keeping the lines of communication open with them because they have really been, they are the backbone of our community. And I appreciate that very, very much. Um, at, at the end of the year, I just want, really want to thank our staff here at Town Hall and throughout the, our town facilities. This has been an extraordinary year. 
It has taken a lot of everyone, um, their concern of their health, their safety, their their family's health and safety, delivering services in the t in our town and ensuring whether you know you're paving a road or snow, plowing the snow or manning our senior center or right here and welcoming folks right within town hall, um, ensuring that the services continue to be delivered this year. Um, it's like a year like we've never seen before and we hope to never see again, but I really very much wanna thank all our staff um, I want to thank our residents for being patient. We know town hall hasn't been open. It's you've had a lot of questions on how how to um, have some services delivered, but um, again, always reaching out. And I have appreciated hearing from folks and hearing how we could do things better in some instances because we're all learning as well. Um, so I want to thank all our residents for their patience through all of this. And um, of course, I want to. Um, welcome everyone to the Public Works Committee meetings. Our next meeting is Thursday, January 7th. I want to wish everybody very happy holidays, happy new year. I look forward to seeing you all in the new year. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Thank you. We're now going to move on to Councilman McPartland. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, the Police and Public Safety Committee met on December 1st. Operationally, I will report that the chief reports that her supply of PPE equipment for the department is well stocked. Also, our Lexapol computerized department administrative service program has commenced at the beginning of December and will support the development of policies, procedures, and assist with the accreditation of our police department. And we, I want to recognize a couple of officers, particularly Detective John Connor conducted a felony investigation with exceptional diligence and made an arrest of a defendant in conjunction with a theft at Mohawk Commons. He also had the assistance of patrol officer Ian Munger in this investigation, which this arrest closed out a case for both miscuing Schenectady and Colony Police Department. So thank you for those officers for excellent, excellent work. The Police Reform and Reinvention Committee convened on November 16th, pursuant to New York State Executive Order 203. And I want to take the opportunity to thank all that are involved with that both the supervisor, the chief, and all of our residents of the town that are also involved in the subcommittee committees for this. This project's going on very well. Brian Backus is the lead on this, so I wanna thank everyone involved with, with that. Fleet and equipment. The chief reports one speed radar sign's been deployed on Wyoming, and we've got another one on Pierce Road Got a new patrol car in service, and actually they both should be in service at this point. And again, we keep our equipment and our fleet in top order to protect our residents. Regarding our building lock system, Charlie Bergami had a walkthrough with the contractor for that. So hopefully soon our new system at Town Hall will begin the installation of the new lock system and security system for Town Hall. And I know that's not just for the police department, but it's for all of our employees that work at Town Hall. Training, we always talk about training in our police and public safety. Patrol Officer Colmeyer and Walter attended a crowd management training that was provided by Troy PD. Sergeant Koshan and party will be attending civil dis disturbance training with Schenectady County Sheriff's Department and Chief Wall, Deputy Chief Stevens, Detective Sergeant Twitty and Sergeant Party attended a use of force training conducted by the New York State Police November 18th. Chief also reports that we have purchased the Police One Academy and that rollout and test delivery will be in service this month in December. Citizen issues, a big topic for us at our committee we got some complaints from people about parking on Onondaga Road, right by the corner of Onondaga and Route 7. The chief is working on that with Laura and Ray to see if we can get some signage up there to keep people from parking too close to the edge of the road. Chief reported that there's speeding complaints. When we get speeding complaints, as you all know, we do traffic studies for Clifton Park, Knott Street, Lexington Parkway, 
some of those studies are still underway. Some of them have been completed. Some have found no problems. Some may find it's a volume issue or a slight problem with speeding. Then we deploy our resources accordingly. Community events, well, as you know, we don't have many of those going on, but we did have, as Councilwoman Jacobitz reported, the um, Toys for Tots, and that was very successful at the town hall. Town clerk reported that there's a list of delinquent dog permits, and she is working on those issues. Court issues, uh, the judges reported that the plexiglass is working out well in the courtroom. They're, all cases are adjourned until January. It's a little bit difficult. Some of the courts are open. Some town halls are not open. So the judges are sort of working through all those things to keep their system and, and their uh, court running smoothly. And our next meeting is going to be on January 5th at 8 a.m. And on behalf of myself, my family, the Police and Public Safety Committee, we just want everybody to have a safe, happy holiday season. 2020, as we know, has been a very difficult year for everyone. So let's close it out. Let's all remain safe, be safe, and hope for a better new year in 2021. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to the supervisor's report. I have two uh, very brief updates so that we can get into the uh, business of the evening. Tomorrow, I will be issuing an extension of the local state of emergency declaration. It expires tomorrow, so therefore, I, I will be extending it again. Um, it will be with the continued closure of town hall, town facilities, and the senior center to the general public for a period of 30 days until Friday, January 22nd, due to the sustained high COVID-19 infection rate in our county. I will continue to monitor fluctuations in the county rate of infection percentage, and should they sustainably decrease, the declaration may be rescinded. And just as a reminder, as we turn the page on another year, our annual organizational meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, January 5th, 2021 at 7 p.m. I can't believe that we're into meetings that are scheduled in 2021, but here we are. Hopefully the governor's executive orders 202.1 and 202.79 will be extended. Those are the executive orders that allow us to meet remotely and hold uh, remote meetings uh, just like this one um, that you're tuned into now. So uh, we're hoping that um, it's gonna be extended. Right now it uh, expires on January 1st, but again, uh, we'll be monitoring that development and we will act accordingly. So in conclusion, I wish you all a lovely and peaceful holiday season and may your 2021 be better and brighter than your 2020. So with that said, we're going to move into our resolution section. Supervisor, just yes, one, sir. Quick, one quick question. I know many yep. of the town courts and um, city courts, some are closed, some are open, some are just doing virtual proceedings. Uh, do you know if the town of Niskayuna is open for virtual proceedings or are they closed? I believe they have the capability to do those virtual proceedings. Um, and that if they haven't uh, actually conducted a virtual proceeding, I do know that they do have that capability. So um, it's a question that I could ask of the judges and, and circle back with you on, um, but I do believe that they, um, they are able to. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, we're gonna uh, begin with our resolutions. I'm gonna start with resolution 2020-315 sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution establishing residential and commercial sewer rent rates for consolidated sewer district number six, effective January 1st, 2021. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delorado? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. 
Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-316, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution establishing the water consumption rates for consolidated water district number one, effective January 1st, 2021. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquist? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-317, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution changing certain fees collected by the Water and Sewer Department effective January 1st, 2021. Thank you. Can I have a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-318, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing payment to HMA Contracting Corporation for pavement services associated with Mohawk Road water main replacement project. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 319, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the purchase of materials for Becker Street Pump Station Rehabilitation Project for Core and Main LP. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-320, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution accepting bids for the purchase of various chemicals and lab services to be used by the town of Niskayuna in its public works operations during 2021. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-321, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution approving a renewal, renewal agreement with Harris Computer Services for software support services and maintenance of utility billing software. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-322, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the superintendent of water and sewer to execute a memorandum of understanding with floor marine propulsions. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. 
Councilman McCartland? Aye. Supervisor Saya? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-323, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution accepting bids for the purchase of various materials to be used by the town in its highway operations during 2021. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-324, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute a license agreement with AAU Hoop LLC for use of basketball courts at River Road Park. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing down, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. Next resolution, 220-325, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith and Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute a license agreement with Niskuna Girls Softball League. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-326, sponsored by Councilman Jaquith. Will the clerk please read? A resolution permanently appointing a laborer in the highway department. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-327, sponsored by Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution to take action on an application for a special use permit for a restaurant located at 2020, 2207 and 2209 Knott Street. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. <clears throat> Next resolution, 2020-328, sponsored by Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the expenditure of parkland funds. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Are we, I just want to make sure we are prepared to go forward with this. Did we work out all the numbers? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Um, and that's a good question. Um, if Ismat or Janet are on the line, if you wouldn't mind jumping in real quick, I know that there was a discrepancy between the account number, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Ismat. Um, so, First of all, we got the, we received the Excel sheet from Laura. Thank you very much. So the only question is, right now we have 143,000 left in the Parkland balance, and if we we have enough money right now to pay this invoice out of there. However, the question is that um, there are another about 81,000 invoices left. So. Um, 
once we are done with that, our parkland fund is going to be a negative. That's that's all we can tell from the numbers. And what happened? So apparently there is an eighty thousand k that is eighty thousand that's supposed to come from R and Parkland. I know that Laura has sent them an email today. Uh, what's the probability of getting that eighty thousand? And my last question is. Do we have to maintain those areas if we run out of the parkland fund? Those are just a question. Once again, all we need is the board to tell us whether these funds will come from the fund balance or from the parkland. Um, is the 80,000 to come? And that's all we need to know at this point. And then my question, to add to your questions, my question is, is the Parkland Fund, are, are, are there projects coming down the pike that is going to replenish the Parkland Fund? We worked very hard uh, over a long time to build up that fund. Absolutely, uh, not that I know of. Maybe Laura can um, tell us more about it, but this is what we have found out. We could put it together, this synopsis from the summary. That's a very good question, Denise, and that's what I'm saying. What happens if it's not replenished? What happens then? We always use that fund for smaller projects. Yes. Know, putting up a playground, you know, putting in a slide. That, so this is a pretty big project for that fund. Absolutely. And the, and, and the purpose of this fund is that, that it is used to replenish those green areas, rightfully so. Um, how much are we going to expect? What is this 80,000 going to come from? What's the probability we are going to get that 80,000? What is it for? So they're all really good questions. I'm asking the same questions. Thank you. Okay. You're so welcome. it seems to me, um, Laura, unless you can expound on that, um, it seems to me that perhaps we should um, get all of our questions answered uh, before we move forward. Um, but again, that, you know, if someone would like to make a motion to table for further the only questions. Issue I have with that, if there's any way we could go forward, I would like to because mm -hmm. I know that, of course, this contract was awarded. The contractor did perform the work uh, in good faith, and I certainly don't want to create a financial hardship for a small business owner. So I, I'm I don't know if there's something, Laura, that maybe we can do. Um, and put this on for the last resolution and just kind of revisit it and see if there's something we can do this evening. If, there, if we can't, we can't. I just want to make sure that we, um, you know, we, we give it our best shot. The yeah. Oh, there's Laura. Good. Does the entire sum have to be approved this evening or can we approve part of it to, as John said, make sure that we pay for the uh, work that we've already gotten done. And yeah. So I just want to be really clear. The invoice has to be paid. This um, this this resolution, I think, is to decide, you know, which account it needs to come out of. So I don't know that there's you know, damage to delaying the resolution if it needs to be perfectly correct. But the invoice definitely has to be paid. We're <laughs> contractually obligated to pay the invoice. And it was authorized to be paid when you guys approved the contract. So the question I think that you're really asking is like, you know, how much do we want to take out of Parkland to pay this? Like, um, you know, where do we want to find the solution for these, you know, types of questions that we're having? The 80000 from Members Ledge is required in order for them to continue on with their project. So when you're talking probability, they have to pay it. Um, they haven't really started construction, so we haven't been demanding money from them. Um, but I did ask them for it today, um, and they are very um, responsive. So I would expect to get a response from them, you know, in good time on where they're standing and when they are able to pay that amount of money. Um, and they have started construction, so that it's timely. Laura, um, Laura the invoice word that you're looking to pay is for ninety-seven thousand dollars, correct? Yes. Because yeah. that's not reflected anywhere in the resolution. Um, so I think the yeah. resolution is not authorizing a, a payment of an invoice. That's not what these resolutions are. Um, this resolution is like Janet was saying, um, it's kind of saying okay. we can take this money for the, the match on these grants out of Parkland. Um, 
You guys don't authorize the invoices once the once the project is awarded. You don't authorize individual invoices. You guys are authorizing. Uh, understood. But Laura, the way this reads, it reads as if we're taking one hundred and fifty six thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars out of Parkland, which, as our comptrollers noted, we don't have. It's it we don't have. So if that's not what we're trying to do. And so the what, resolution yeah. doesn't, you know, read the way it should to effectuate what we're doing. That's why I was getting to the 97, which is fine if that's not what it's doing. But the way the resolution currently reads, we can't approve it because it reads as if we're moving money from Parkland that we don't have. So how right. can we yeah. fix it? So I think that if you guys want to, to take action on it and, you know, the, lawyer, the lawyers can jump in here, too, is that you could probably just remove everything after the first resolve clause. So that it literally just says we're taking the in kind out of Parkland and Rivers Ledge, um, like in, impact fees. If you just like you just strike everything after that, I think that removes anything that's wrong, <laughs> and gives them the direction to be able to, to to use Parkland. And Janet and Ismat could jump in there if they feel like that's adequate or not, or the lawyers could take about me. That would be my suggestion. So for so Sorry, although, although as everyone's already expressed, we have we really do need to have the broader conversation about you know depleting this fund. As Councilwoman McGraw has noted, it's been something that's been built over time, and you know we will have obligations. It, our comptroller's noted as will we have obligations with respect uh, to this land that we'll have you know we'll have to you know maintain, and how are we going to pay for that? So again, it, it does involve that broader discussion. Without a doubt, but we still, I, we still need to pay this invoice. So, Mr. Briggs, is there a way? Can can we do what Laura suggested and uh, strike what's underneath the first resolved paragraph? You can do that, but Laura is entirely correct. The, we're, we're contractually bound to pay this invoice, whether yeah. it comes from Parkland fees or anything else. The contractor. This is not a resolution telling the comptroller to pay this contractor. He has to be paid. We're contractually obligated to do that. And to not pay him would be in breach of our contract. But yes, Laura's correct. You can strike the bottom of the resolution and then that um, will allow parkland fees to be transferred to uh, carry out the match. And the uh, town board and the comptroller's office would have to determine if, in fact, that's what you want to do. But this resolution in that way would at least authorize that to be done if, it, if the determination is made that that's the appropriate thing to do. And then we can take a look um, at the Parkland Fund and how we're going to, you know, replenish that and what we have coming in for grants and the like. John and everybody, per perhaps on the, the, the first resolve clause. Maybe we could edit that a little bit because it reads that this town board does hereby authorize the use of 156,675 from parklands and dedicated Rivers Ledge park fees. Could we include from, you know, parklands and or other sources and that so that we aren't committing to all of it coming from parklands? Would you be, is that, would that work so we can sure. decide? Okay. Yeah. I, and I, I think that's part of the reason why we have the river sledge in there, so we can balance it both ways. But yeah, whatever we need to do with that paragraph to get it done, um, you know, let's let's go for it. Can, can I add something? So we just need in that resolution, then we will just need the clarification where the money is going to come from. I believe um, that's correct. So we're authorizing the payment. We just right now aren't sure where it's all going to come from. The the, the resolution is not authorizing the payment. Right. Resolution. No resolution about authorizing this payment. The payment has to be made. The resolution has to do with whether you're going where's to use parkland funds to make the payment. Okay. So can the payment be made, Paul, if we table this resolution? Yes, yeah, so the payment's gonna has to be made whether or not you pass the resolution. Okay, 
I was under the impression we had to pass the resolution to make that payment. So if that's not the case, we're really not in a rush to pass this resolution. Is that correct? Well, I, think, is I think you should consider passing the resolution so that you have, and I think um, Councilwoman Jake with, it makes a good point. You then have the option and you have, you already have the authority to determine whether or not you're going to use parkland fees or some other source to fund because we have to make the match. That's right. part of the agreement. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. So I will uh, motion to amend by inserting into the resolved clause um, that it will read that this town board does hereby authorize the use of $156,675 from parklands and or other sources Um, and dedicated Rivers Ledge Park fees for use on, and then it would continue. And I also um, would like to strike out of the further resolved clause um, that scheduled up below. So where it says general fund, the appropriation account, to strike that. And supervisor, I would just recommend striking the whole further resolve paragraph. Okay, very well. So I will uh, update my amendment to strike entirely the further resolved clause. Right, so everything after the word grants in the correct resolved. Yep, correct. So I'm just, uh, I'm not a lawyer, so just a last question. So. I understand that the, we don't need a resolution to make the payment, but I think the board supervisor still somebody needs to tell us later or however, how we are going to make this payment. The rest, the balance, where is it going to come from? Right. That's well, all we need. To it can be done later. That that's like a, you know we do the budget modifications, right? Where we put money from one line to another and those sort of things, right? But this is we're saying we're committing to the hundred and fifty six thousand to match, and then we will work out the budget and accounting. But I think is I think as much point is that she has to make the ninety seven thousand dollar payment and. I think, uh, you know, it's supposed to be made before the end of the year. Right. And although we expect 80,000 of that to re be basically, you know, replenished, covered by the River's Ledge Park fee, that 80,000, you know, in, if we're going to make it before we get that 80,000, they, the comptroller's office needs direction as to where that's coming from. Is it coming from Parklands? Is it coming from Fund Balance? And again, we know eighty thousand dollars of it. We'll contra we're contractually obligated. Park owners will get that back, right. uh, but they need direction on that. And then, obviously, at least seventeen thousand is coming from the town. Where is that? Where is that coming from? And I think that's where you're looking for direction. Correct? That's Isma? absolutely right. Thank you. Well, her most immediate need is, you know, 98K, according to the email that got sent earlier today. And there is plenty, there's more than that in the parkland balance right now. Okay, so you want us to, we will then in that case, make the payment from the parkland for 98 before the end of this year. Right, with the expectation that the $80,000 that we get from um, Rivers Ledge will be, will replenish that parkland fee, at least to the, to the extent of the 80,000. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Good teamwork. Okay, so uh, motion and a second. I motion to amend. I suggested the amendments. Do I have a second on my motion to amend? I'll second. Thank you. Starting for the discussion, changes or additions? Okay, on the uh, amendment, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Baker? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes on the amendment. Okay, and the amendment carries. And now on the motion as amended, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. 
Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. Motion as amended passes. Next resolution 2020-329, sponsored by Councilman Delarada. Will the clerk please read? A resolution changing certain fees collected by the Planning and Building Department, effective 2021. Thank you. Do I have a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jacobs. Yes. Councilwoman McGraw. Aye. Councilman McPartland. Aye. Supervisor Syed. Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-330, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing certain budgetary modifications. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? All right. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Bye bye. And the resolution passes. Next resolution 220 331, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the super, supervisor to enter into a contract with Kuzak and Company for professional auditing services. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jacobs? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Bye bye. And the resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 332, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the auction and sale of certain surplus equipment. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? So now, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five aye. And the resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-333, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute a memorandum of agreement with local union 1130 county and Municipal Council 66 of American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO Highway Unions, to create a successor collection bargaining agreement. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I just, ha I just have one question. I know we didn't really get a briefing on this. So um, is there any change to the sick leave policy? I'm just, it has a line in there about sick leave, but I just don't understand if we're making a change. So it's a change um, that will benefit the town, uh, number one. So um, just want to make that clear. Um, and it cleans up the language. So there were um, two different banks of sick time, essentially. And uh, the purpose of it was to uh, provide a separate sick bank for quote unquote uh, abusers of sick time. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it created a lot of headaches for payroll. Uh, we don't have those individuals in the department any longer. Um, so it seemed like a mutually beneficial change that um, rather than have to you know, track down all of these changes, which really did cause a lot of headaches in payroll. Um, that this change just made uniformly across the department was um, was positive change. So it's going to help out payroll department, and like I said, um, the individuals who were uh, the common abusers of the sick time um, are no longer with the department. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? 
Okay. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacob? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. This resolution 2020-334, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to retain outside counsel. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I want to welcome Elena back. I'm happy to, she's willing to enable to help us out during uh, a time when uh, our deputy attorney at this point won't be available. So welcome back, Elena. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 335, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute a member participation renewal agreement with New York State Municipal Workers Compensation Alliance. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jake Wolf? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-336, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution approving the amendment to the municipal corporate cooperation agreement with New York Liquid Asset Funds. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, thank this, you. this resolution is incomplete. Or I don't know oh. what version of this in the last packet. Maybe it is complete now. Let me check. In the much touted paper copy that we were sent today. Right. Well, can I ask who seconded that? Uh, I did. Rosemary. Rosemary. Thank, thank you. Just give me one second. I had it okay. up on the screen and now it disappeared. Thank you. Oh. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. We we should know. All right, let's see. Two twenty three thirty six. Okay, so Alexis, I'm just looking for the um, the date. The first whereas. So I know there were two additional versions of the packet that went out later today. I'm just not sure. Alexis, do you know the answer to that? Okay, let's see what you mean. Um. Alexis, is it worded like that because it's an agreement that needs to be filled in when it's signed? Is that why it's blank? And I don't know where she's, is she? Okay. Yeah, can't access the microphone. Okay, yes. Okay, so yes. Like on, so we'll just write it in on the day that, whenever it is, July, January 2nd or something like yep. that. Yep. So, okay, this is all uh, model language that NILAC sent over to us. Um, they yep. just gave us, you know, a, an example and then, you know, drop told us to drop it into our uh, official letterhead and then it'll be stamped by the town clerk. Great, thank you. Yeah, but that's a great question. That's that's why you do see those blanks. They will be filled in. Excellent, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so I, I believe we have a second, correct, uh, Michelle? Yes. yes. Okay, great, right, great. Are there any further questions? Okay, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. Yes. Councilwoman Jacobs. Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. 
Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five eyes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-337, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution amending the Town of Niskayuna's notice and grievance procedure under the American Americans with Disability Act and designating an ADA coordinator. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delorado? Yes. Councilman Jacob? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And the resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-338, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution establishing the dates of the meetings of the town board in 2021. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delorado? Yes. Councilwoman Jacob? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilwoman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020-339, sponsored by Supervisor Syed, Councilwoman Jacob, and Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution declaring Juneteenth a holiday for the town of Niskayuna employees. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Who, who was that? I didn't get oh. them. Sorry. Sorry, it had to be Bill. <laughs> yeah, it can't be you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delorada? Yes. Councilman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution will this. Next resolution 2020-340, sponsored by Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution directing the assessor to grant ex exemption pursuant to real property tax law section 459-C and section 467 on the 2021 assessment roll to all property owners who receive an exemption on the 2020 assessment roll in accordance with the governor with governor cuomo's executive order number 202.83 thank you do i have a second second thank you for any discussion and eric i see that you're on the line of if there's anything that you want to elaborate on, I know you did a great job explaining what this um, executive order was to me. So, um. Well, I just, I just think we have two vulnerable populations here. And if we can minimize their contact, um, just with the burdens of, of really getting their taxes prepared on time and getting them to my office on time, um, many of these people, they, they need assistance. They ask for assistance to get the paperwork done. And if we can minimize contact, maybe we can minimize some COVID infection. I'd rather not be, uh, um, I'd rather not have, have that burden on my, on my office of possible infection, that's all. Exactly. Well said, thank you so much. Are there any other uh, questions? Okay, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delorado? Yes. Councilman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution 2020 341, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling on Governor Cuomo and the Vaccine Distribution and Implementation Task Force to designate the Niskayuna Water and Sewer staff as essential frontline workers to be given priority for COVID-19 vaccine during phase 1B. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. 
Thank you. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. Then this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-342, sponsored by Councilwoman Jaquith and Supervisor Syed. Will the clerk please read? A resolution calling on Governor Cuomo to and the Vaccine Distribution and Implementation Task Force to designate Town of Niskayuna Highway staff as essential frontline workers to be given priority for the COVID-19 vaccine during phase 1B. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacobs? Yes. Councilman McGraw? It appears she may have dropped off. I don't see yeah. her on the screen. Anymore. Okay. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Councilman McGraw, are you there? Four eyes. Okay. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2020-343. This is a ceremonial resolution sponsored by Councilman McPartland. Will the clerk please read? A ceremonial resolution recognizing and honoring retired police chief Daniel McManus. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? I'd like to read the entire resolution. Absolutely, Bill. Because in different times we would have uh, the chief here and present. So I'm going to read this and then we will have one for our signatures as we usually do that then I can deliver to him. So being enacted, the town board of Niskayuna as follows. Chief McManus served in the Niskayuna Police Department from 1992 to 2020. During his 28 years of public service, Chief McManus served in the rank of patrolman, sergeant, detective sergeant, deputy chief, and chief of police. And whereas between 2013 and 2020, Chief McManus championed and oversaw many changes in the Niskayuna Police Department, such as computerizing police operations, centralizing police communications in Schenectady County, necessitated by raise the age legislation and discovery and bail reform and requiring non-lethal weapon and acquiring non-lethal weapons for police personnel. And whereas Chief McManus was decorated with a Departmental Commendation Award and Chief's Commendation Award for his outstanding performance as a member of the Niskayuna Police Department. And whereas Chief McManus was well respected in law enforcement community, serving as president of the Northeastern Chiefs of Police in 2019 and graduating from the FBI National Academy in 2015. Whereas the Niskayuna Police Department recognizes Chief McManus for his leadership and dedication to continuing the legacy of outstanding police service to the people of Niskayuna. Therefore, be it resolved on this 22nd day of December 2020 in recognition of his service, years of service to the town of Niskayuna and Niskayuna Town Board offers its personal and official thanks and appreciation to Chief Daniel McManus and publicly commends him for his service to the town of Niskayuna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Chief. Are there any further comments? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquith? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Four ayes. And this resolution passes. I'm now going to make a motion to adjourn. So I could have a second on that motion. Second. Thank you. 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we are now adjourned for our last meeting of the year. I sincerely wish um, a very bright 2021 for all of you. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful evening. Happy Thank holidays. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Happy holidays. Be well.